Oh, we were like brothers. I mean, we didn't have to tell any, each other what we were going. I mean, we just we just felt it. We knew it. And uh, and Bob even said that Brad's dad. He said, hey, "Y'all y'all y'all act like your brothers." And you know, and I've been to his house. And he's been to mine. And, you know, and uh, I've stayed at his place. He stayed at mine. And and uh, you know, Bob took us both under. His, you know, of course, it, Brad was his dad, but you know, he he treated me like like I was a son too. And we were just we were just really tight. And uh, you know, I'll never forget the morning. Uh, a friend of mine that's in the business, Jeff Jeff Anderson, out, out of Knoxville, called me. He said, he said, he said, man, Brad, Brad died. I said, what? And I, you know, so uh, you know that just took me for a flip, you know, because my dad had passed away two weeks before, and I, Brad and I were supposed to tag in a in a little town in Alabama. And I called Brad, and you know, I said, you know, my dad passed, and you know, I've got, I think I'm getting a case of shingles, so you know, I can't make this. I'm just, I'm just not going to. And he said, well, that's okay. Dad's going to be there, and he, he said, I'll get Dad to be my partner, and we'll just. So what they did down there that night, and this was on Saturday, um, Saturday night, uh, he got in the ring and told him that my dad had passed, and this that, and he said, but I'm, you know, my dad's here, and da da da, and and, and you know, it, it all played out. But I talked to Bob later, and I said, you know, it's funny, you know, because in May of that year, Brad and I tagged here in my hometown. We did a fundraiser for the football team here, and and, uh, that was my last match with him, and I was just glad that his last match was with his dad. So, you know, things kind of fall in place sometimes. But uh, not a day go by, I I don't think about him. He was a, he was a heck of a guy, a heck of a worker. You know, I learned a lot from him. Uh, you know, and it was just it's just I don't understand a lot of things sometimes. You know, a lot of things happen, but good Lord does. So that's all we can uh, that's all we can do. And the thing with Brad is, and our show, which is great, we always ask. You know, like at the at the end of the interview, we'll say, you know, like oh, favorite opponent or favorite match or something, and invariably, you know, we've done 200 and whatever episodes. So many times, Brad Armstrong's name comes up as, you know, like, oh, I love working with him. He's the easiest guy in the world to work with. He was the best worker I ever worked with. And it's just great to kind of get you on the line because, obviously, you know, the Lightning Express, what an underrated, great tag team. Can you, can you explain that kind of chemistry that everyone seems to have with him and how much of a great worker he seems to have been? He was a funny guy to begin with, you know, and Everybody was so relaxed with him, and, and you know he there's nothing he couldn't do. Uh, there's a few things he wouldn't do, but you know as far as in the ring, you know he was solid. You know everything was good. Uh, you know a lot of times, you know back in the day that you know the heels usually led the match, and uh, most of, most of the time, you know. Sometimes the heel get lost, you know, and, and and Brad would just say, "Hey, come on, come on, come on, just you know, put him right back in in line," you know, as as I've done a lot of times. Uh, but you know, it's just amazing because it, I, I go back to the Hawk thing. I beat Hawk, and then I ended up having to wrestle Brad uh, in the second round of the tournament. And so Hawk hit the ring, and I ducked, and he hit Brad, and I got disqualified. So uh, Brad ended up um, working with Jack Briscoe. And then, of course, Jack Briscoe beat Brad, and then Jack got to work with Flair. But, you know, that's just, you know, Brad got an early jump, you know, his dad being in the business and, and having the book when Brad broke in the, in the business in Atlanta. And then he, he and his dad, you know, jumped right out on TV and then became the Georgia Championship or tag champions down there. And so, you know, he just had a lot of notoriety. You know, all the Armstrong guys, the brothers can work, you know, from Road Dog to Scotty to Stevie. You know, they were all they were all good workers, all smooth. But Brad just had something a little special. Definitely feel like totally, you know, underrated in the grand scheme of things. Unless you're talking to, you know, that's from a fan perspective, but when you're talking to the wrestlers, you know, boy, he wasn't underrated. They always seem to bring him up as one of their favorites and one of the best workers that they've ever been in the ring with. Yeah, he was, he was, he was a class act. 
um, we just kind of, you know, timing was, wasn't great for us. Uh, as far as we were always on the heels of the rock and roll express, you know, they were, mm, they were yep. both draw, drawing money, you know, they were in uh, Louisiana and then came up to Charlotte and, uh, you know, so we were, you know, you're going in there following them, you know, it's, it's just a hard act because they, they got such a big push and, and they were drawing because they were, they were hot. And uh, so, you know, we, it was just, you know, some of the tag teams wanted to work with us, but, you know, the, the promoters didn't, didn't, didn't give us that opportunity a lot of times, so.